Now that we have the CC zip file in that code cub directory, I'm now going to close that. And I've opened up the code coverage results view. You can see it right here. And now I want to connect RDI or connect the code coverage to that actual file that, that was created by the code cov command. Very simple. I'm going to add a location here, add result location, click on the plus sign here. I get a window that pops up. I will go to remote systems and click on my connection name, which is right here. And I'm going to access this now, not from my filter, but from the root file system. And you'll see why in a minute, because it's, it's, it's going to require the fully qualified name, which is my uh, profile name, my RDI profile name, the connection name, and then the entry. You'll see in a second how that all works. So here's root file system. I'm going to scroll down to code, code cub, which is right there. I will click on it just like that. And now I will say OK. There now is the fully qualified name, as you can see right there. I'm going to give it a name. I'll type in code coverage results using code cov command. And I'll say OK like that. Here it is over here now. When I expand upon that, just like that, there again is the that CC zip file. It's right there. If I double click on it, it will open it up. And these are now the results from the code coverage command. Very, very clean, very simple to do. Here now is that secret data. That's my service program right there. If I double click on that, yes, it's my connection. I want to use this connection. It will now bring up the source code, as you can see. I'll double click on that. Here's my source code. And next to each of the lines, as you can see, as we get into the code, as I come down more, that is, as I get into the code, now I can see the green and red next to each line, and I can see exactly what happened. If you recall from ENC debug, this particular program was passed a direction parameter of letter E, which means encrypt, because it was sent a credit card number to encrypt. The first parameter was indeed the clear text. The second parameter was the E to encrypt it. You can see that it came down right here. It, it executed the housekeeper subroutine, and then it came right to the code here, and it went into encrypt routine. So there's housekeeping. And here now is my encrypt routine. And because it never received a D to decrypt, this entire subroutine is red. And of course, this is some other work routine that it needed to use from my other from my other subroutine. So again, that's really it. If I go back to my results over here, I can see them again. Here's ENC debug. Double click on that. Yes, this connection I want to use. And every line of code was used over here too. So that's it. It's really very powerful. You can really get into more of these and start having multiple multiple instances or multiple runs because you notice that I have the time and date over here. If I were to do this code coverage again using a different data set, I would then have two entries over here, at which point I can I can click on them and I can start merging them, compare them to each other, which is grayed out right now, but I can compare them to each other. I can merge the results. Really very powerful. Very 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 powerful in fact. Gives you a chance to use different data sets test your programs and make sure before a program goes live that every single line has been executed at least once so you can you can ensure that your code is hopefully bug free but more importantly that it's being used as as intended that's code coverage headless code coverage i really encourage you to do it it's a phenomenal addition to rdi and that's what i have so thank you very much and i'm sure i'll see you again bye now